Last summer, we built this simple footbridge, and now that summer is winding down, we've added a lot of finishing touches, like these simple lamp posts on each corner, made with concrete post blocks and colorful posts with solar lights on top. And we did it without digging or mixing concrete. We'll show you how we made them with love for a country house. For each post you want to make, you'll need one of these concrete blocks made to hold a 4x4. We found ours at Home Depot and we'll put the product code in the description box. Then you'll need a post, which can be tall or short. You can even get pre-drilled posts if you want to build a rail fence or a fence with pickets. But what we liked best about this block and post system was the creative possibilities. We used them to add structure and some solar lights around our footbridge project that we built this summer. Take a look at how we did it. Once we had our blocks settled into place around our bridge, we sprayed them with Krylon Satin Peacock Blue. Then we mixed a custom chalk paint color for the post, simply mixing a few colors together. And this paint is good because you really only need one coat. It's about seven inches from the top of the block to the bottom. And you could try hammering a square ended post into it, but what we decided to do was taper the ends of her post with a miter saw. Pat measured a grid and he drew lines on the bottom of the post and he chopped off each corner. And this will really help the post settle in firmly into those blocks. We also shortened our posts using the miter saw. This way the post accented the bridge without overwhelming it. We nailed the largest picture hooks we could find, one per post, leaving room for a post cap that will go on top. These hooks will hold our chain, which we're using for railing. We used bare waterproofer on the post, and as you can see, it warms up the colors, sort of antiquing them. And also, you can see I've marked the post where I want them to go. Even with the tapering, our post will wobble. So, we coated the inside of the blocks with Silka Concrete Fix, and it worked great. With a few taps of the hammer on top, the adhesive bonded quickly inside of those blocks, and now the posts don't wobble. We used carabiner clips and 10 foot long lamp chains to create railings. Remember, you could make solid railings by using pre-drilled posts and rails, but for us, we'll be doing a lot of maintenance around this bridge, so we could easily remove the chain if we needed to and get to the garden and water feature. To waterproof and color the bridge at the same time, we used bare waterproofing with a twist. We added to one cup of waterproofing finish, one quarter cup of Kills Complete Coat, and a color called Berry Punch. You probably don't need a whole gallon of lilac primer. <laughs> no, I didn't think so. But Kills comes in a rainbow of colors in an eight ounce size. So you can buy these little containers of tinted primer and use them for all sorts of colorful projects. But when we combined it with the bare waterproofer, we could still see the grain of the wood, but it was thoroughly protected from water. And that's exactly what we wanted. Luckily, these water-based paints dry very quickly, so Luna didn't get any on her fur, and walking in the dirt removed it from her paws after she left her mark. But we were glad we could find water-based products to decorate this bridge project. Our big shortcut with our post caps was using ready-made post skirts from Home Depot. They're not expensive, but they can be tricky to fit, even with pre-cut lumber. So ours were a little too big for our post. So after giving them a coat of blue chalk paint, we cut boards slightly larger than the skirts and we glued everything together with Typhon and we'll add nails with our nail gun later. We're using the top part of the solar lanterns we bought and we removed the plastic posts that go into the ground. Now we're gonna cut holes in the center of our board tops for the short stems of the solar light. So first we mark the center of the board then we use a hammer and nail to make a small pilot hole. This pilot hole step is very small but it's super helpful in getting your drill to work quickly. 
in cutting your hole. I've never used a hole saw before, I've barely even used a drill before, but this drill by Ryobi is 18 volts, so it's got enough power that it makes up for my lack of skill. And it went through the board in about a minute or so, and as soon as it punched through, I removed the battery from the drill and I let the bit cool down. Here's what it looks like. It's made by Bosch to cut one inch holes, and I'm handling it with gloves because it gets pretty hot and I'm using an awl to push out the wood plug. Then I start the process all over again until I have four boards ready for my solar lights. We do a little bit of cleanup with a file. Then here's a great tip. We use Loctite go-to wrap. We split a strip of it and we wrap it around the stem of the solar light. You could remove the wrap, but the idea is we're making the stem like a soft cork that can be pushed into the hole and then anchored with a little silicone glue. Done. Now just a little touch up paint and a coat of our bare waterproofing and we'll be able to attach these to the tops of our post with a few nails. We'll be able to change the batteries in the tops of the lights if we need to. And we should be able to work the lights out and replace those too if we ever need to. But for now, can't wait to see them lit for the first time. If you like this project, please turn that like a thumb blue and for more love for a country house, check out steffymccarthy.com and click the sun logo to subscribe. See you later.